Thank you for listening to Grant's Rants. Yes, I entitled the episode series finale as I feel like this is a good place to end the show or put it on pause, however you want to refer to it. Um, I have been giving this a lot of thought and this was not an easy decision. Uh, those closest to me, I've been asking for about a year now, what do I do with Grant's rants? You know, tastes change for me. And I haven't been as committed to watching Housewives. And I know that so much of you tune in and have followed me since After Buzz, and I respect that so much. And I just fell out of love with a lot of the Housewives stuff. And I really honestly felt tired of giving them free publicity and promotion. I didn't feel like it was ever reciprocated. And it just wasn't really necess necessarily something I was in love with doing so much anymore. And digging through page six was fun, but it definitely started to become a chore and I never wanted it to be. So basically it was important to me that this show was not left out hanging. Like whatever happened to that show? Are you doing that anymore? I wanted to put a period at the end of the sentence. And that's why this, was, this last episode is just so important to me. I'm going through a transition in my life. I'm still producing podcasts full time. And that might have something to do with why I want to move on as well. It's kind of all podcasts all the time. I'm doing a lot of uh, production work and some of it is more pleasant than others. And I just feel a little burned out on the podcast side. So I think that this is, you know, the right move for the show overall. And I really hated that I was not consistent and that I've always been consistent with this show. There were times when I would sometimes only see people during the week when they came over to record Grant's Rants. This was a huge part of my social life, and I loved putting the panels together and the holiday specials, and I would create whole parties around that. The live show, I just loved that opportunity that I created before live shows were really now, you know, a thing that people make so much damn money doing live shows. Now it's crazy. But I mean, I wasn't the first to do it, but it's just crazy to see how the industry has grown and changed. And um, I've tried to reflect that with Grant's Rants. We had the one-on-one -on -one segment in the first episodes uh, for a while, and we would profile different people. And the show kind of evolved and changed as they should. These shows are living, breathing things. And um, I just think to how it started at the West Hollywood Library in a glass conference room with a snowball microphone and how uh, even on that front, that's changed where the audio has changed and been improved and I've you know had to take the show virtual and I don't love that. I miss the in-person. So the show has evolved and changed for good or for bad or for indifferent, but um, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I never knew how this journey would end but I know that I'm going to go back to where it began with the my guest co-host. So let's do it. Let the ranting begin. Broadcasting from New York, New York. It's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. On the podcast, Christy Olson and I look back at our rants from episode one. 192 episodes later, we reflect on some of the show's most talked about celebrities and TV. From The Real Housewives to The View to Lindsay Lohan, between episodes and recaps, this is the 266th show. That's a lot of rants. Let the ranting begin. I am joined by my first guest on the podcast, Christy Yay. Olson. Welcome back to Grant's Rants. Oh, Grant, my gosh, this makes me so happy just to hear you say that and open the show that way. Uh, it just um, makes my heart swell. So good to be here with you. Thank you. You know, I, I hate lasts, so I really am not viewing it as like a last thing, but like even just to like open it up one more time and you feel like, oh, is this like, and I don't like goodbyes. I'm like, is this really the final one? Um, I think so, but um, one never knows. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bittersweet feeling uh, at this point, but I feel like we're, I, lo I love a good bookend and I love to start where we began. So I have to have you as the final guest. I've always known 
that you would be the final guest. <laughs> oh, it was such an honor to be the very first guest. And I remember way back in the day, um, out back of the studio at After Buzz in the dark late at night after one of our live shows, you telling me that you were going to start this podcast. And it was before podcasts were even really a thing. And you were the first person I knew who figured out how to make it happen. And who not only that, but was consistent and built a real community. This was right around the time when it was just celebrities starting up podcasts. And yeah. um, it didn't seem like anyone could do it anymore. And you really built a community of, I know you have these awesome listeners out there. Uh, some that I've been able to engage with a little bit over my time being on the show too. And what you built is just awesome. Grant, I have so much respect for you. You've inspired me and so many of our friends for the last several years on just being consistent Aww. and um, giving yourself a voice. Um, I, I just, it's such an honor to be wow. here with you for the last one. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I mean, you know, you are no stranger. You've been creating your own content long before I have been in the podcast game. So that means a lot coming from you. <laughs> Definitely. Never with your consistency, my friend. Well, that's the thing as I haven't been able to be super consistent with this show and I talked about it at the top, but yeah, I mean, I just, it was not something that I just wanted to leave out there as like, you know, whatever happened to that? Like, this is not how I wanted to do things. So I feel like this is a nice, you know, period or pin at the end of the sentence. Does the sentence continue? I don't know, but I think that this is going to be it for a minute at least. So, you know, I, uh, I'm giving it my all for the last episode here. I always knew that I wanted to go back to the beginning and look at the topics that we talked about. Our first episode was August 25th, 2015. So this is a totally different time than where we are now. The Kardashians were the only thing on page six and the news. I mean, it was a very, how can I put this like anemic time for pop culture? <laughs> it was not, you know, it was like, Instagram was heavy, but like we, they were, there wasn't like Hollywood reporting news and things weren't getting as many clicks as they are now. I mean, now you go to page six, every other article I'm not getting is Real Housewives. Mm -hmm. I couldn't Absolutely. find topics to talk about around the Real Housewives at the time. So I will say I'm very proud of the fact that I've never broken my rule on this podcast. No Kardashian hot topics. Ah, I, I love that. I think we're talking I about Caitlyn, that. but... Uh. Well, you know, I, I feel like maybe we still talk a little too much about them. So for you to point out that we're actually doing better as a society and um, disseminating yeah. our attention to some other reality TV families, I think is a great thing for all of us. Yeah. The mother, Chris, over there, I mean, she owned the media at that point. And it was that was literally all there was. I remember we, we talked about so many different things on this top podcast. Some of the earlier episodes, we talked about fast food trends or something. We talked about uh, an, an animal in Holiday the Holiday gifts, I remember. Yeah. I um, mean, so really I think creative. Stuff. Yeah. Now it's just like, you know, so-and-so made an Instagram post and there's six articles about it. I mean, it's, it's not any beefier now, but there's just a lot of clickbait, a lot more of what we're talking about as far as like headlines go. And that's just, you know, that's still kind of empty, but um, I just, I would, I would use page six a lot for this show. And I also just got tired of going through that list. And, you know, right now everything is about Giselle and Tom and it's yes. just not something I'm interested in. I slowly, And the Royal family. Yeah. The Royals. Yeah. I slowly kind of stopped finding such interest in these stories and I felt like they just were kind of so fleeting and there really wasn't anything to really sink our teeth into. I would like things that we would propose questions around or pose questions around, I should say, and, you know, think about a little bit. Yeah. And the problem part of it too, is that the stories that are out there right now are very empty. You know, it was a blogger said this, someone's trying to get attention, some oh, Joe yeah. Blow in, in middle America, trying to get attention by making up a quote unquote rumor that no one ever said that never had any um, ounce of validity to it. Right. And now it's to the point where some of the reality shows that we love are having to acknowledge these quote unquote rumors, which again, are not rumors. They're just lies made up by someone for attention. Right. Oh, yeah. So when it gets to the point where that's what the show becomes about, um, it, it makes the news very weird. It makes it very difficult to cover it and to even have commentary about it when there's really no substance there. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I thought about while reflecting on this, this last episode is, you know, I, a turning point for me was when I had Margaret Josephs from the Real Housewives of New Jersey on, and I, I couldn't really huge. ask her questions because everything was so filtered 
and we couldn't really talk. I didn't feel like I was being myself as far as what I really wanted to say, because that's just, that just, you can't really can't. I mean, there were all these PR people. And I was like, this to me, that's why I didn't really haven't booked a lot of people on the show after that, because it just didn't appeal to me. They can't say anything, you know, they can't confirm anything. And it was also, there are people on the Bravo side who uh, would make sure that podcasters early on would not be able to book housewives. Um, Paige Dubois at Bravo TV. Um, she made sure that these certain podcasters wouldn't get housewives on. And that was an issue. Saving for me. them for herself. Yeah. That was an issue for me because I was trying to build the show and I knew the audience. I knew who they wanted to hear from. And I wanted to, you know, have to ask questions that not everyone else was asking. Like the stuff that Andy, the canned questions that he'd read off cards. Like, I just didn't want to do that, but I never had the option really to really legitimately book people. And that pissed me off. And right. now they've realized in these last couple of years, the power, this goes to what you're saying, the power of these rumors and these podcasters and these YouTubers who spend all day doing live lives mm -hmm. talking yeah. about Kathy Hilton and mm -hmm. you know you and I talked about these bitches long before you know what happened <laughs> on TV oh, yeah so it's like you know I just kind of like okay I just didn't want to play that game and I like to think that I have more to give than just breaking down housewives headlines honestly Yes, the networks have taken so much more control. And I think the people listening, they can understand that. If you think about a lot of people watch 90 Day Fiance, you know, um, around this time or a few years later, I was doing a show called 90 Day Fiance News Daily. Every single day, there was three to four juicy stories about their personal lives, not what was going on on the show, but them going back and forth with each other on social media and divorces and things coming up from their past. And 90, uh, TLC did not appreciate that very much. Uh, as we all know, some things got out about some of their high profile people that they've had on the show that they we've had to cancel um, some of the cast members, right? And TLC mm -hmm. doesn't want that. So they really shut everybody down um, and started controlling all the interviews that everyone was doing and that sort of thing. And I think people could acknowledge that if they think about the things that would have come out a couple years ago about those cast members is now they're just really getting a sanitized uh, version in interviews and stuff like that. And the alternative, the thing about that, Grant, is that the alternative to it is someone like you is going to have what? Um, someone who was on a show a couple times, but who doesn't have a publicist, who's not in good with the network, maybe somebody who had a bad experience on the show um, or who is willing to just spread lies about other cast members to get their attention because they can't otherwise. And I know you and I don't play around in that playground. So what yeah, else is there really? That's not fun for me either. I mean, I, I yeah, to give like like these people, these side characters a platform and, you know, Eh, I don't I just didn't do it for me. I don't enjoy like all the drama around the nitty gritty stuff that really doesn't matter for I don't know. It's just not I, I just maybe I outgrew it, but I I enjoyed the housewives and all these shows for the absurdity of them. And we'll get into it, but they've just I've said it so many times on this show now, but they've just gotten too serious for me to look real. And I don't even mean real, like as in like this is not produced. It's just like some of the stuff is just like ugly behavior and I'm just yes. like, it's just not entertaining to me. But anyway, let's turn to uh, the ugly behavior on the set of The View back in 2015. We're going to go through the topics Christy and I covered all those years ago and see where we are today with these. Like, here's what was hot like seven I, years I ago. I cannot wait. I can't wait because I remember just being so excited to talk about all of these things and I'm yes. sure it'll be just as fun to take a look back. So The View was the number one topic on Grant's Rants, of course. I mean, you know, the recurring... Uh, Your favorite thing to blunder. rant about. Yes. I questioned in this, this our, our interview in our first section, first segment of the podcast, I questioned if The View it would be considered like a GMA. Like it will just never get canceled. They'll just plug new people in. Like if this will just be on forever. And I'm starting to think that that's what we're, that's what we're getting here. What do you think? You know, I think I would have said that too, before the demise of the talk. Well, not, the talk, I, because the talk is still around. Which one got canceled? No, no, no. The real. Uh, they got, Garcelle's got canceled. The, the real. real. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think, you know, of course it was sort of the third one the distance in the ratings and stuff but yeah. if that one's starting to fall off is the talk going to be next and then ultimately the view, the view as well i i agree yeah. um but 
of course, we have to think here about the advertisers. It's the number one draw in money more than an audience or, you know, what the media is talking about or anything else. And that is a reliable uh, advertising kind of juggernaut for them. So that would be the biggest reason why I think, yeah, maybe you are right. It'll never go away. Yeah, it does well, unfortunately. And they, I don't know, the New York Times called it the most influential political show on television. So that was like years ago, by the way, where they're still, that's still like they're leading with that. Yeah. Um, don't care. The view is, I continue to look at clips and I'm just astounded by what happens over there and not in a good way. <laughs> but the story in 2015 was Kelly Osborne was on. She uh, offended the Latino community, including mm -hmm. at the time co-host Rosie Perez. There was a comment about toilet cleaning related to Donald Trump. And uh, I don't know. If we've and, really, and the Latino community. In the Latino, yeah. And I don't think we've really seen... Um, uh, what's her face? Uh, Kelly Osborne since I don't think we've really has she recovered from this? You know, she's been she in the press just the last couple of weeks just because she's having this baby and yeah. she's talking about that. Um, she's she really hired a publicist. She had a huge fall from grace from E. Like, yeah. I don't see her on these things, I don't consider her an influencer. Like, we look at people like Paris Hilton who have really kind of made it work for them and mm -hmm. they've had almost a, like a, a cultural resurgence, but. Kelly, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if I care. Well, that whole fashion police thing, I think, has a stigma in itself. You know, Juliana Rancic doesn't work anymore either. Mm. Um, you know, that was really kind of the height of all the snark, right? Yeah. We, weren't, we weren't, weren't supposed to like that kind of thing anymore. So I think that didn't do Kelly Osborne any favors. Also, she did uh, notably kind of take a step back. I think she has said that on her own. Um, but what did she even really do before that? You know, I, know, I was just watching something where they're talking about the importance of the Osbournes. And yeah, it was huge. And yeah, they were huge. But it was like two seasons, right? Maybe. Oh, that was it? Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't long and it wasn't yeah. much. And um, did oh. she was she able to really create anything out of that? Even this view thing was just a guest. She was just there, you know, as a guest one day. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the, the Osbournes have any importance whatsoever. I can't even imagine. I mean, the show itself was... I guess groundbreaking for reality TV as a genre, but I mean the first celeb reality is what yeah. it's sort of billed as. But I always think of the Simple Life. Yeah, I, even, I even if it didn't like, come first. Sorry, I think of the whole celeb reality on VH1 of like they had their their Big Brother version, the real life, the real life. Yeah, that's which is I coming feel. back in a few weeks. Actually, oh my god, is it? I did not know this. Yes, yes. Can oh, I remember? God, I can only imagine the people on this. I was going to call them losers, but I'll be I'll be nice. Who are they going to find to do this in real life in 2022? So they've already filmed it. Um, I wish I could remember some of the names on. I want to say Dennis Rodman's one of them, but it's it's that people who were interested in seeing. Yeah, because didn't sure. Dennis Rodman didn't he do Celebrity Big Brother? I'm trying to think. Like, I don't he's, know. Yeah, he's done a slew of that kind of yeah, stuff. I'm sure, um, yeah, there'll be plenty of people to join. But he's busy trying to fix Korea, so I don't know if um, uh, that's on his radar. True. Right <laughs> well, we were not forgiving of Kelly Osborne. We were very against these comments back then. We were not Team Kelly by any means. Uh, we both agreed that the view handles it really poorly. I gave Kelly the Sherry Shepard Award for Excellence in Ignorance. Ah, the Sherry Shepard Award! <laughs> I mean, again, this Sherry Shepard has come a long way. I'm happy for her show. I really torn her to pieces in the past, but like she's got her thing going. But the award was for excellence and ignorance because of her saying that the world was flat and not believing in science. This goes back now almost 20 years ago, but that's where that came from. But I'm, I'm you know, Kelly really was ignorant for those comments. So I stand by that. And uh, what else is on here uh, today? Yeah. Today, what is the fallout of this? I mean, a fallout for me is the mother is still around, still trying hard and still getting canceled. And I wish she would go mm -hmm. away. She was on the five on Fox News. I only know this because it was on at the gym. And now she's on this whole anti-woke campaign. And mm -hmm. didn't she say this week she wanted her money back from BLM? She so, wants her $900,000 back from the Black Lives Matter movement. She yeah. called it a scam. She's just following in Pierce Morgan's footsteps. Oh, yes. You know, I friends, think they're um, very tight, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Why Why they don't do a show together. Right? So she's, oh, uh, she's nobody burning. wants to see that. Yeah. She's burning every bridge that she can find, I think. And um, it is what it is. So the Osbournes, that's the status. Any final thoughts on this, this topic on The View? I mean, they made Rosie Perez and put her arm around Kelly and apologize for her tweets or something like this. Like, 
if I were Rosie, I'd still be mad about that. Yes. Um, and it did make me realize that we don't hear a ton from her anymore. And sh- I really liked her and enjoyed her quite a bit. So um, that's kind of what sticks with me is like, where did she go? Like, don't, yeah. don't run, don't run away. Come back, Rosie. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> I think like the view scared her away. <laughs> Another topic we discussed was Kim Richards, our girl. Oh. <laughs> We've, oh, you and our I, Favy Faith. I know our we mutually love her. I don't know many people that do, but we do. Yeah. And um, we, you, I, you did call her recent behavior though unde- uh, indefensible at the time, and I can understand why. She was arrested twice at Target for shoplifting. Uh, one of them was over six hundred and twelve dollars worth of items in the dollar section. Mm -hmm. walking out the door with it we called her behavior rock bottom because this was all alleged but she was homeless living out of her car she was hospitalized there was rumors she was taken in by kathy and then kathy refused to help her public intoxication she previously kicked the cop at the beverly hills hotel a person yes she had that dog that kept eating everyone (laughs) the list goes on kim is a complicated person but regardless i still like her but yeah kim was in big trouble at this time in 2015 in august of 2015 she was that's why it's so interesting to take a look back at this like you said rock bottom and we've seen a lot of ups and downs from her over the years but it's nice to look at this and go hey yeah we don't hear a lot from her now but we also haven't heard about any of this kind of stuff going on target trips yeah (laughs) No, no. And I I have always just rooted for her so loudly and I would love to see her return to the show. But it seems like all that stuff that went down was what really needed to happen. She really needed that. That was the turning point for her. Um, And the fact that we can sit here now and see her as kind of a success story, right, of of sobriety and that kind of thing. And we don't know exactly what's going on with her. She could be a little bit of a hot mess. That's probably okay. I think she might always be. Um, but yeah, come to think of it, there were, there were some photos a few months ago, uh, where she looked a little messed up and she was out with, with Kathy. And, you know, I assume that they're taking care of her. She's so into her family now, her grandkids, and she has all that. It it reads like she has a lot of joy in her life now. And she certainly didn't back then. So um, I'm happy for that for her. Well, at the time she was on the verge of a comeback. We talked about it on the first episode. She was in revenge for a little while. And then she was uh, had a big role in the, the Sharknado movie. So, right. yeah. So she was like inching towards like, you know, a little bit more like kind of like, like whether we like it or not, what Kyle was trying to do it in, in Hollywood. <sighs> and um, I think maybe Kim realized that it's just too much. And that hopefully she's I hope Kim is doing really well and I would love to see her on the show. But I also feel like it's probably best that for her own mental health that she isn't because Lisa Renna has will have knives out no ready shame. to eat her for lunch. Yeah, You know what? That's a good point. Maybe we could hope for uh, like a like a three episode mini series of like Kathy and Kim go to. <laughs> Kalamazoo, I don't know, like a simple lifestyle thing <laughs> yeah, with yeah. just Kathy and, and Kim um, or I something would... that's a little more produced. They're doing something yeah. like that with Luann and Ramona, right? I heard about that. I don't know where, I don't even know what's happening with that and Roni Legacy. I'm starting to think that all these things are just lines for publicity. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm starting to question everything going on with the Roni stuff of it all. Mm-hmm. But I don't well, know. Kathy is um, bragging about everything she's got going on over there at NBC. Yeah. And I know Paris' show and all that, that is huge yeah. for Peacock Network. So if, yeah. if they can negotiate Kathy and Kim, go to ne- Kalamazoo. Never forget. You don't have to pay me. I want to be a Hilton, the reality show that Kathy ran on NBC. Maybe she's still thinking back to those days. I remember I had to cancel. I was on vacation. I canceled dinner plans to go and watch the episode live <laughs> on NBC. <laughs> Stupid. Yes! <laughs> I can still sing the theme song, which I will not do on this oh. episode. But um, yeah, oh. no, I loved that. So maybe she still has deals. Maybe she still has first look deals. Who knows? Yeah, um, you know, we don't have Kim really anymore, doesn't. but we we did get Kathy. So uh, a, a fair substitute. Uh, yeah, yeah, almost. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. It makes Kyle look kind of normal with these two sisters, but it still oh. doesn't make me enjoy Kyle anymore. I still no, can't take to Kyle. I know you no. never cared for her. No, no. And now it's worse because now she feels like empowered. She like <laughs> thinks she's a favorite. She's a legacy. She's the one that's been there since the beginning. So um, she's just even more audacious and she's got more money than she ever did. She doesn't have to bitch about any of that. Yeah, um, that's yeah, true. I just, I, I can't watch her. I can't. 
Well, the next topic was uh, we were quite fired up over this one, especially you, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner, and this nanny. Remember this nanny, Christine Auzunanian? I don't know. Yeah. An absolute nobody. Oh, funny how, yeah, and funny how we still don't know her name, even though she was trying us so hard. Is that what I said back then? Yes. Yeah. Yep. We didn't even say her name. So it took oh. the whole arc of Grant's Rants. To I love call. that about us. Yeah. No, we did it. Just you know, now we'll say all these years later because there's no power to it. <laughs> but remember, she was on taking pictures of the drop top Lexi. Remember that? Yes. Yes. But it wasn't telling all of her friends that they were in love and the whole thing. Mm hmm. Very strange. PeopleMagazine.com had made they, they claimed this article was updated in September of 2022 because I went looking. I just for read her. the same one. I just read the I same was one. Like, so I was like, what, what? is this date? Yes. I was like, what happened? The, the article is the same. Yes. There's no new details. How did that get bumped? Who does, who does, what's her face? Christine, no over there. <laughs> right? I was wondering the same thing. I, I looked at the same exact article this morning, but How, also some what? stuff popped up about what Jennifer Garner said later. I don't know that her comments were out yet. No. When we, we, didn't, when we had done our show. We didn't have them, yeah. Right, yeah. So now Jennifer has admitted that, yeah, Ben did have a thing with the nanny and she didn't know about it. It had no effect on their divorce, was not the cause of their divorce oh. because she didn't know about it until later. And then she admits that she was pissed. And she did not like that she had to fire this woman out of her children's lives. Yeah, and it was I get even, that. It was even more of a real mess. And we thought it was just the nanny trying yeah. to, you know, attention whore herself. But like Jennifer Garner earns, she earns some type of an award for putting up with what she and continues to put up with today. Mm -hmm. a mess. Great. She's a saint. Yeah. Uh, what else do we say? We, we, okay, I, wrote, I wrote, we predicted we'd never hear from her again. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. Ah, uh, we're so wise. Did you look up <laughs> what she's doing today? I tried. Well, I found in some distant article that she, according to her LinkedIn, she's in real estate. Surprise, oh surprise. <laughs> and she's probably trying to get on yeah. the OC. She's an assistant VP at a large title company in LA. That's that's all I know. So wow. I did not all go to her celebrity action. clients. Yeah. <laughs> so there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. She's in her in her Rolodex. Insane. And then the last story we covered was Ariel Winter uh, from Modern Family at the time. Her breast reduction that we talked about her image with girls and all that. And um, you know that was that's a different kind of topic for the show. All these episodes later. But, um, you know, I think we were, we were celebrating her for like making a decision. And I was talking a lot about how women were not used to hearing women getting a reduction in, in L.A. If anything, it's the opposite. So we were kind of like commenting how why that was such a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she had just turned 18 and she had dealt with so much with her emancipation um, from her mother. And she's still to this day now when we look back. Man, what a mature young woman, yeah. you know, all that stuff that she went through as a child. She is not the quintessential child star nightmare story, not by any means. And um, I just I really I, I applaud her, you know, she seems like she's got a good head on her shoulders. She is in a relationship with her boyfriend. They moved out of L.A. for privacy. I read in an article yeah. like she knew to take herself out of the scene and. You know, she's happily in this relationship. So I'm happy for her. I did. I will say, like, I, I Googled her and like every article is still talking about her appearance. They were talking about what plastic surgery she's had done, her hairstyle, her clothing. Like, it's still all about her appearance all these years later. And she's grown up, you guys. She's grown up. Of course, her face is going to be different and her whole, you know, she's yeah. a beautiful woman. And um, man, I can only assume that that kind of commentary is probably so normal to her. And how messed up is that? Mm. You know, yeah. she's, she's probably so used to that. And um, that's really sad, man. Yeah, but she's going to be replacing Demi Lovato in this NBC sitcom Hungry. So... Mm -hmm. I don't know what the story oh, about is the kids that are in um an Anna an anorexia recovery treatment program, right? That I was greenlit so. years ago. Yeah. I don't I know. I suppose Denise's awesome. issues probably put it on the back burner and now she's not even gonna be in it. Uh, apparently she's just serving as executive producer. So who oh, knows? Okay, okay, okay Denise. And, okay. and we can call and I'm I'm calling her she. I mean, is that an issue? I know she changed her pronoun. Oh, I'm sorry. On the Instagram. Doesn't she go by she, she or they? That's what I last that's the last I heard. That's what was on the Instagram. So that's what we're going with here. 
But yeah, I, I don't really know. Who knows on that front with what's mm-hmm. happening with Demi? So yeah, that covered our first episode's worth of topics. So we've got fresh ones for you for this last one. Jeez. Don't worry. Well, that was some juicy stuff. So 2022, do not disappoint. Well, we have to talk about Lindsay. I mean, it's just, we've talked about Lindsay and more than anybody else on this podcast, I'm sure. Lindsay or Brittany. Our other favey fave yeah. besides Kim, Lindsay. Lindsay falling for Christmas, her Netflix movie coming out November 10th. The trailer has dropped. What are your thoughts? Okay. Um, at first, I have to be honest, I was a little bit concerned. I saw it on her Insta and it just started rolling in my feed. And so it took me a second. I was like, what is this? And then it, that scene where she is on the mountain with the fiance is it's in just the first few seconds. And it seems so cheeseball and low budget for a second. And I was so sad. And then just immediately, um, it, it takes a turn. You get it. It's mm-hmm. going to be campy. I'm not a big Christmas movie. Per- I'm not a big movie person at all. Not Christmas feel goody movie at all. I am now. I will be on <laughs> November 10th, right? When yes. this one comes out. It it, it looks so so fun it has so much heart she's playing the character that we would want to see her play it's one we've seen her play a few times before but that's okay and um i am just so freaking excited for this grant to see her back on top and to know that she and her personal life is also doing great this is just one of two uh a two picture deal that she got at netflix so there's another one coming too where she's in ireland and she's in love i just cannot wait It, it it looks like She's happy to be there. Yeah. In this she trailer. looks great in the movie. I'm excited. I'll watch it regardless. Like I'm I'm all in. And we've talked a lot about Lindsay's career on this podcast and the trajectory that it could take. Where where is she going to end up? Will she ever be an Oscar winner? Is she ever going to be treated seriously enough for actual real roles that are nominated and big academy pictures and things like this whatever all these types of things and i always said like if she could just get back into some type of like film work that was not necessarily like on a hallmark level we, we saw her in that lifetime movie you know with liz yeah. and dick but if we can get past that she could earn the trust of the industry again and really be that amazing comeback story and i think that these this two picture deal is we're going up the roller coaster again. And I, I feel really good about it for her. I saw her showing off those comedy chops. You know, she always did the drama thing great too. Um, what was that? Home Georgia's or Sweet Home Georgia. Oh, Georgia Rule. Georgia Rule. Yes, thank you. You know, and mm-hmm. I think we thought that if she could get rid of her trouble, she was on that trajectory. She can get back on it. This movie might not seem like, you know, the future Oscar winner, right. but it'll take some time. We'll, we'll yeah. get comedic Lindsay back first. And then I think maybe, you know, a drama is in the future. And if they could ever get that Oprah show Lindsay um, oh. streamable anywhere, I I know yes. that's not good for her, probably for Oprah, probably for freaking anybody, but I would just love to rewatch it. And I promise not to think anything terrible about Lindsay. <laughs> you know, I know. You, you and I have it. waited like, for how far the, she's come. Yes, you and I have waited for Lindsay, the documentary series, to come back for so long. Yeah, um, I just feel good about it in general. I think that she can really earn trust and get those insurance rates lower, <laughs> you know, so that's that way these studios will take her seriously and they will want to invest in a Lindsay Lohan picture. And I'm sure that the show, this movie will do well on Netflix. A Christmas movie always does anyway. Everyone's going to want to see it. I think I know, I know that I'm going to want to see it because she's singing in the song. She's got a new song, Jingle Bell Rock. So yes. Oh oh my gosh. I want to say that I play the Aliana Lohan Christmas album, which is absolutely atrocious and unlistenable. I play that every year. It pisses off my whole family. I love it. There's a reading from Dina in the Night Before oh. Christmas one. And I just, I love it. So I, I Lohan is coming out with new Christmas music. Like this, I already know this is going to be the song of the season for me. It's yes. A, I, it's playing in the trailer. I don't think Lindsay has like an incredible voice. I don't think her strength is vocals, but I don't care. I am like ready to hear move it. over santa baby um i was always just as big of a fan of her music as of her movies and i could probably sing along every single word to every song on both albums so i am down for that and i forgot about ali's christmas album but i'm going to add it to the rotation <laughs> of my nsync home for christmas yes. you know oh, christina feel, has one well too. into it's that yes it on the list the christina aguilera christmas album by the way oh love that one beautiful beautiful yeah. 
Um, but anyway, I just am excited for this. Her sister Allie is going to be in the movie and of course music. So I can only hope that Dina is not that far behind. Similar to Parent Trap, I hope that Dina is sitting by a pool in the background doing background work or an under five. You know, Dina had to be on that set for some reason. So I hope oh that God. she gets her moment in the sun and then I will feel like nature is healing. I will feel so good if there's a Dina cameo somewhere. <laughs> I will be looking. And I hate to be those people who are talking about the actress's looks, but also Lindsay looks absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think for someone like her, again, that's what we've yep. always all talked about. And that's been the focus. So I'm going to start it by saying something super positive that she has just never looked better. Yeah, I'm excited for it. And I'm excited for the narrative to change around her a little bit. I mean, all of these girls have grown up. I've talked so much on this podcast about the Paris, Lindsay, Brittany, you know, infamous picture in the car and, you know, uh, Brittany has ways I got one to go. too. <laughs> I love that. I, I got my car shield just like Grant's ranch. Oh, good. good. I, I still have my car shield here. Shout out to <laughs> Nick, who bought my listener of the podcast, who bought that to me. God bless you. Oh, you guys have been so great for supporting this show. I'm, oh, thank you. But um, Paris, Lizzie, Brittany, I've talked so much about that. You know, Brittany's got a way to ways to go, but, you know, she's finding her way and reclaiming her body and her independence. Paris seems to be happily married and somehow relevant more than ever. Uh, I think. Yes. Yeah. Not going I, anywhere anytime soon. Nope. Did you watch Paris in love? It was I did not. No, it wasn't my thing. She's and then, lovable for a reason, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then Lindsay's, you know, approaching the, um, the big time again. So our girls are doing good. That's all I can oh, say. Oh, that makes me so happy. Yes. So let's uh, transition to a little bit of housewives talk. Also a big, uh, what can I say? A, a big tent pole of the show. I mean, that's, I know who's listening now. Are you watching the Salt Lake city housewives? I tuned in for the first episode of the season, but I will not be watching just like last season. I watched season one um, religiously. I was so into it. And then two, they really lost me just again, too much. Uh, too much turmoil, too much mm -hmm. useless arguing, too much dinner parties to have a dinner party about the last dinner party. And I just couldn't get into it. So I watched the reunion and that's what I fully intend on doing this season as well. First episode reunion. I'm sure I'm still going to get it all. And in the meantime, yeah. I will have everything being spilled out in real time in entertainment news. So I don't even feel like I'm missing anything. Yeah, that's the way to do it now. I mean, honestly, if I want to get caught up, I watch a reunion. And I'm like, oh, great. There's the highlights of the whole season. And it's definitely like a great cheat sheet. Um, I don't know why more people haven't caught on to this. But um, <laughs> I mean, I I get it because like I'm looking for more mindless entertainment. I realize like I haven't been watching much TV. I need to watch more TV, actually. <laughs> I um, work a lot and I just haven't had much opportunity. I don't, I have a job that doesn't allow me much flexibility. So I just haven't been able to really stick to anything, but I need to watch more. So I um, actually watched the most recent two episodes leading up to the reunion of the Beverly Hills housewives. So I did look at those, but I will say I watched the first episode of Salt Lake city this season. And I, I watched half of the second episode so far. I have to watch everything okay. in like installments, but um. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy the show, but yeah, I mean, it's like there's it's a lot of contrived things to create conversation and it's not as natural. I like the natural moments like there's there's a lot of stuff going on with Whitney that seems really real. And then you've got these other scenes like the like Coach Shaw's birthday party that was so done for the show. And it's just like it's it's just it's lost its authenticity to me. Yes. And all that stuff that we were just getting for the first time, Coach Shaw's first birthday party, the first time Jen had a meltdown on camera, all that stuff, it, you're just going to take it at face value the first time. Be like, OK, this must be authentic. This must be them. But then happens again the second season, again mm. in the third season. It's like this is contrived. It That's my biggest problem with Salt Lake City Housewives is Jen Shaw. And I wasn't sure that she was going to get the second season after she was just so deliberately doing everything for the cameras season one. And then she got indicted. Right. Of course. And now there's yeah. a story. They're not they're not letting her go anytime soon, of yeah. course. But I just she honestly kind of ruins it for me as much as she's probably bringing in viewers uh, now for this season and last. Uh, to me, that's sort of why I'm gone. Yeah, I don't enjoy her. I mean, I'm going to see how this shakes out when, you know, I have it written down here. They changed her sentencing date to December 15th. I mean, like, wake me up when it happens. Like, mm -hmm. 
You know, I mean, there's nothing else to really say. She's not going to admit to anything all season, as we know. You know, she's got lawyers in her ears. So, like, I just don't know, like, what the point of it all is. She's not going to come clean. And it's just no, and we've seen her be fake contrite before. Yeah. We've seen her be fake sorry before. And this um, statement that she released when she changed her plea, where she finally is taking responsibility, you know, as soon as she is sentenced, and if she does get off of everything, it's going to be right back to the party line. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't know. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm innocent, 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 innocent until proven guilty. Because with this way, I don't know, you know, if she can necessarily get like a straight guilty thing now that she's pled out or whatever. It is so. Um, I, I, I just don't that. expect to see the contrition from her that we're reading about in this statement. Right. Um, and and I need some from her. You know, there's a big, there's a glaring difference between this situation and the Erica Jade situation. And to me, it's that we know Jen Shaw did things. She she's admitting now to doing mm-hmm. things that are not only illegal but are unethical and just are just downright not very nice. And that's what I think of her as a person. Um, And as far as Erica goes, I know a lot of people um, were seeing through this now, but she could be 100% innocent on everything that anyone said about her that she's done wrong. So it's very different from Jen. Oh, interesting perspective. Yeah. I mean, I still don't really care for Erica, but (laughs) But, I mean, there's a chance, you know, which, you know, the the, the different crimes for different women. Right. (laughs) Right. Um, (laughs) I don't enjoy Erica, but I saw the clips to the season and the behavior. And I mean, it kind of checks out with what I thought, but I don't really care about her, to be honest with you, even give her much more of my time, Erica. I don't have any sympathy for her myself. No, I was unable to really care about Erica had been my favorite before all this sort of went down and I have remained supporting her, but just none of them really interest me. Mm. Um, Dorit has gotten more likable, but there just isn't anyone, again, they're all kind of putting, putting airs on and we have to go back, go way back to Orange County and even Beverly Hills when it first started, it was just such a different show about their families and about their real lives. And now it's about their lives as real housewives. Yes. Instead of being about their real lives. Yes. Um, and, and that Lisa is Lisa Rinna brought that element in. And that, yeah, that's she's like, I think she's just a horrendous person in the show. I don't know if this is who she is in real life, if this, she's playing the producer puppet game. But I mean, I we, we, I watched the whole thing between Kathy and uh, Kathy and uh, Kyle. And then Lisa Rinna came in and I'm team Kathy on this one. So I, I, I'm on team on that side. I haven't seen it all play out, but no one has because it wasn't on camera. It's stupid. We have to believe all this that we didn't see or hear. And also, even if you haven't seen it, as I haven't being a huge fan of the show and of those women, I'm still not going to bother to watch it. I've read about every scene. I've read every yes. comment that happened in the show and now everything they have to say now. Like, I know the story. I've watched it play out even without having to watch the show. That is a problem for producers. The other problem is Lisa yeah. Rinna, has she crossed the threshold now into being a liability? Like, yes, you can expose things and yes, you can cause drama and you can get your name in the press and that can be great for the show and it can bring more eyes to the show. I think it's getting to the point with Lisa where especially if she ruins Kathy Hilton for Bravo and for NBC and for Peacock, she's going to be in trouble and she's going to become a bigger liability than she is an asset. She's in danger of that to me. Yeah, there's that rumor she's trying to get $2 million for her salary next year. I mean, what's her worth? I really don't care for for her. And I loved Lisa Rinna on Soap Talk. And I got a kick on her in the beginning. I was there for the ride. Did she take any job? She was just you know, a hustler in Hollywood. I mean, you know, it was relatable. It was funny. And now relatable. it's very serious. It's like she's just not who she once was. And what one scene, she's crying over her mother. The next scene, she's going to smirk on her face watching Kathy and uh, Kyle go at it. It's like, it's, it's not right. You know, I just really can't follow her anymore. I don't care to. Um, I think I actually unfollowed her on Instagram. Big deal, but still. And then I was, we we're talking about, you, you mentioned like OC in the first season of Beverly Hills and how these things, these shows have changed. Like I showed my mother the trailer for the reunion, the season 12 reunion. And the music and the, the rewinding the tape. And it's very, very 
dark and dramatic and set up with high stakes. You've got Kyle basically begging to Andy to let her leave. She said, I'm not okay right now. And I was like, there's something really gross about this. I don't revel in this drama. If they try, are they trying to be like Game of Thrones? Like, wh- where are we going with this? Why does it have to be so cutthroat? And then they cut to them having silly conversations. It's like, you can't, it can't be both. The show itself, to me, is not that dramatic, but the the marketing of it, they're they're, they're making these women not only they pit against each other, they're making it like like a survival, Mm -hmm. and this this and these edits, and I think it's so disgusting that Kyle has to look to Andy as if she is is for permission if she can get up and leave. That's gross. Yeah, it also said something about Kyle and how much her position means to her and how much her, you know, uh, self-worth is related, is tied to being a reality star and tied to doing, you know, what Andy Cohen and the network wants her to do. (sighs) But you're right. It's not fun anymore. No, there's no fun. And the fun is all contrived anyway. You know, I mean, and the the whole thing with the house life's culture has gotten so like magnified, like that hunky dory line from last season, like that is now everywhere. Like it's, I don't know. It's like we would laugh at these little moments. We would do after buzz, and we, you know, say, "Did you catch this?" And then we'd move mm-hmm. on. But now everything is iconic and legendary, and mm-hmm. they're using these things to get higher salaries to tear each other down more. And it's like. It's they're jealous of each other's success. I feel because of these little moments, and it, this is not the show I signed up to watch. I really have to say, I loved the first season of of, of Beverly Hills, and this is just it's crossed a line for me. It has, you know, uh, in the pro wrestling world, there's a saying. Well, I guess they probably say this in every industry, but the inmates running the asylum. Mm. And doesn't it sort of feel like it used to be again about? the housewives about a a group of women who were friends in a city and now it's about the real housewives Mm -hmm. right like like now that's a capital r capital h yeah Yeah, it's about and and every reality show goes through this they got to that point on after you know the first couple seasons of the kardashians the hills um even Mm -hmm. vanderpump rules where they become famous and then the narrative has to change because that's a big part of their life is that everyone knows them now um, and yeah, and- call out. I totally agree. We've got Tamara coming back to OC and I enjoy her, but we'll see how much producing is going to happen here again. Her whole identity has been wrapped around being a real housewife. Taylor Armstrong is so proud of herself for making this transition. Well, I don't know if it's this- warranted, but we're getting it. Um <laughs> Listen, Tamara needed this time out. She was yes. getting in danger of going into the Lisa Rinna zone yes. a little bit, right? She needed to kind of get sat back down and go, hey, remember what happened to Gretchen? Okay, yeah, you take yeah. a time out for a couple seasons. <laughs> yeah, all right. But they've and, become and- careers. Like you were saying, though, these are career, like literally Taylor's like switching like branches like at a bank. You know what I mean? Like these are their jobs. It's about them as Real Housewives. It's weird. It is weird. And with Taylor, I mean, she, yeah, we watched her get her job back, right? On Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. I mean, I watched that and thought there's no way that she's not getting recast on the show. Yeah. Um, and and I think R H U G T is is part of this whole vehicle now where uh the housewives are becoming bigger than the show. Yeah. The the actual women are becoming bigger. And Tamara, some of the things that she has said in interviews since she's been fired makes me think that she has had this sort of epiphany. She gets it now that she's gotten out of the bubble a little, little bit. She's not taking it as seriously. She wants to be more authentic. And the show, the OC really, really needs that. So back. true. Yeah. I agree. Beyond. I don't know what they're going to do with that show. I hope that Tamara can somehow like bring it back down to earth, but they've still got <laughs> that Gina and that Emily on there mm-hmm. and they've still got Heather Dubrow on there. I don't know. I don't know what the future of that show is, but I will definitely be continuing to peek at it and see how it goes. And I, I want to see the shows do well, but they've got to come down to earth a little bit. They're, they're way overproduced. And the, like you said, these housewives are taking themselves way too seriously and they're having to compete for contracts and ultimate girl strip as great as it is. But now that they brought these women back, who, not all of them, but some of them, that's going to be, like you said, a vehicle and they're going to go in there and those women are going to push so hard. I mean, Dorinda was really like, 
cringe in that. And now that they know that there's a secret sauce to that and a success uh, record, ooh, it's going to be faker than ever. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm concerned for the third season of that one, especially just some of the stuff we've heard already sounds like antics for the cameras. Yeah, I agree. Right. Yeah. Well, um, but they're supposedly Vicky's coming in too, since we have Tamara back and Shannon's still there. We're gonna get some kind of Trace Amigas uh, they reconciliation. Seen filming? They were seen filming just in the last like week or so. Yeah, and it sounds like Vicky know. isn't. We're not gonna see much of Vicky, but if we could at least get that, and Vicky did that to herself again. <laughs> how Taylor made herself on Ultimate Girls Trip, Vicky killed herself. I think Vicky has a place on that show at all times. I don't know why they did what they did. I think that she is the OG of the OC, OG of the whole thing. I think that there should at least be a a, a pity position for her <laughs> out of respect. I love Vicky still. I know it's controversial, but get her back on the show because that was they like Kelly Dodd says it all the time in her podcast. Like they literally are all real friends. Like they're all off the show but real and the people who are on the show are not all connected and real friends. Like one of these things is not like the other. And so I, I want to see OC get back to some version of authenticity. And for me, I think that has Vicky in it. Mm-hmm. So, Oh man. Well, I am going to be excited. And I can tell you what, I will not be watching only the first episode in the reunions of OC, no matter yeah, what, there's nothing, loved OC. there's nothing they could do to, to make me not watch every single episode yeah. of OC. We had Megan King Edmonds on right OC one year, right? And I remember And we, then husband Jim and, Edmonds. Uh, yes. And after Buzz. And I remember we, when it was her, her first episode, Miss 30 Year Olds. Remember it was uh, um Megan, who's had quite an interesting love story oh, of men. Oh, to say the least. But I remember you said we're in on after you're like, we're introduced to Megan, Megan with an H. And I always spelled her name right because of that. Ah. I don't know why that sticks out to me. Megan with an H, Miss 30 year old. Shannon. Oh, Shannon, remember her? I I I I I don't throw parties. I create charities or something. I start oh charities, Megan. Well, what sticks in my mind from Megan and Jim coming in the studio was how in love I thought they were. After that, I was like, oh, they are so genuine. They mm-hmm. are so real. They're really in love. Vicky's wrong. They're not gonna be divorced in five years. Like they were so legit in love. How cute, how sweet. Oh my god. Yeah. Not oh case. my God, he's right. Yeah, call me in five so years so and you're sweet. divorced. Yeah. Uh huh. A nail head, Vicky. Boom. <laughs> yeah, true. We uh, must talk a little bit about Amanda Bynes, another figurehead of this podcast. And so, anyways, whenever there was an update, we would always give her our best. And now it looks like she's going to be a, a manicurist. She's 36 years old. She's finding her way. She navigated. Hollywood until it didn't serve her anymore in multiple ways. And now she's, you know, finding her next act. What do you think? Well, it was fashion first, right? She went to fit them and, and graduated there, which is a huge feat for her. And it sounded like she was going to start her fashion line. And now she's into doing nails. She posted this photo on Instagram showing that she's in nail school, kind of showed off the classroom and stuff and her friends, which is just so, again, we keep talking about relatability, like just mm-hmm. the Amanda Mines, just in like a, a school classroom with some other people yeah. who probably who are so young that they don't even know to res- give her the respect that she deserves. Right. Uh, so I love that she's that open with us but you know what i'm ready like i'm ready to wear the fashions i'm ready to wear the amanda <laughs> Bynes nails like i i, I want to be the first client at the salon like let's get her let's get her on the job finally you know out of school and on the job i'm ready amanda yeah. If she's well enough, she has an opportunity to make a lot of money and to build a big brand for herself. And I mean, the tweets are still being printed on T-shirts and mugs. And I mean, like people know who she is. And I would love to see her just like just do something that would be like a a, a full circle moment, kind of like what we were talking about with Lindsay, where there's at least some like not a comeback, but like I'm creatively fulfilled, everyone or like, you know. I'm doing good. You know, I want to see these people do well. Her being being good now feels like a comeback, right? Like it almost feels full circle that she's not saying the kinds of things she was saying. She was really somebody who we couldn't have supported for a while there and and was really someone who was hurting other people. And now um, now she's just looking for joy for herself and really has found it. And I, I think that can be inspirational for a lot of people. Yeah, onward. So I think that pretty much covers all of it. We talked about the view a little, just you know, Brittany Housewives, uh, 
Paris, um, all of the greatest hits. So I feel I feel good about that. All our fady faves. I think I said that a couple of times, but <laughs> yeah. all our all our girls. Yeah. Well, um, I hope that I can continue to guest on some podcasts and give my thoughts and opinions. I still have a lot to say out there about, you know, the soaps and some of the housewives and things like that. So hopefully I can still pop up on some other podcasts and we'll always see what happens next. I know I'm developing something myself that I want to do that's different than this, but I'm always looking for um, creative gratification, a, a good balance of things. So I enjoy, you know, ranting and I'll continue to do so on Instagram and, and the like, and we'll see where things go from there. But um, yeah, thanks for being my last guest for now. <laughs> well, Grant, thank you for giving me an outlet over the years to talk about everybody that I love and give my opinion and to meet your awesome audience here. And again, I just want to congratulate you on having built Grant's Rants into an awesome, very highly rated podcast. Um, you. Whatever you do, I hope to be able to do it along with you because you are my absolute favorite person to sit and talk with on the air. I have grown a lot as a host because of you and have been oh, so inspired the over the you. years. Oh, well, but you just keep an you. at it, man. You're you're the it's best. Funny. I don't know if hustler is is a, I mean it in a in a positive way. You you are like the the hardcore hardest working, most determined person I know. And just over the years, I have always looked at you and thought, Grant keeps going and I can keep going too. Thank you. Well, I I like to think I'm quite resilient and that, that's, you know, I, I appreciate it. I mean, it, it gives me more more uh, energy to put towards that resiliency that is needed in, you know, whatever is next. So thank you for that. Yeah, um, just really grateful for, you know, every opportunity that I had to get this show in front of new people. I did a lot of guest work on other shows. I would come back to After Buzz and do that. Um, I appreciate all the guests that I have. Almost all of them uh, were, it's a little shade, almost all of them were really <laughs> great. And um, I uh, really appreciated that I got to have, that I put together my own live show and people came out to that. And that was a really great experience. And I really use the show as an experiment for so many different things. There was a time where I was an assistant and I really didn't have a lot of creative gratification and I wanted to really see where this could go. And I just totally invested myself in creating an audience and building an audience. And that's what happened. So, um, you know, I'm grateful to everyone, even those who have listened from the beginning who are still here in the last episode and those who have come on in between. I say it all the time. I love you for listening. Thank you for listening to Grants Rants. This has been Grants Rants. Follow Grants on Twitter and Instagram at It's Grants Rants. Cover art created by Howie Rone. Original theme music by Alexander Artsin. The Grant Michael Collection.